The U.S. Space Force has long toyed with the idea of Thor's rods, also known as rods from God. This concept imagined massive kinetic weapons dropping from orbit and striking the Earth's surface with the force of an asteroid. But now that idea has evolved. Instead of rods, we're talking about space-based lasers, powerful beams designed to shoot down enemy hypersonic missiles. So why is this such a big deal? Well, another strategy is satellites orbiting close to Earth can react to threats much faster than ground-based anti-ballistic missile systems. That speed could mean the difference between a successful defense and total devastation. And it's not just the U.S. pushing forward. China and Russia are also racing to develop similar systems, including what's known as fractional orbital bombardment systems. More detail all in the videos ahead. The Golden Dome, America's future shield, is designed as a multi-layered system, operating across four distinct stages. At the heart of the shield are space-based sensors, a constellation of at least 100 to 1,000 satellites or more. On the ground, interceptor systems like the existing THAAD missile batteries stand ready to take action. At sea, the shield is reinforced by expanding the capabilities of naval missile defense systems. Modern destroyer ships carry advanced interceptors, providing a mobile and flexible layer of protection. For the final stage, there's growing interest in deploying killer satellites equipped with futuristic technologies like lasers or particle beams. These powerful systems could potentially intercept and neutralize threats during the critical boost phase of a missile's flight. But let's dive deep down into how these works. The Golden Dome represents as a futuristic, a multi-layered shield intended to protect the United States from the most advanced threats, ballistic, hypersonic, and cruise missiles. Originating from any corner of the globe, the concept is designed to detect, intercept, and eliminate incoming missiles before they even leave the atmosphere. At the foundation of this system are satellites equipped with advanced sensors, forming a vast network that orbits Earth. These satellites are constantly vigilant, scanning for the slightest sign of a missile launch by picking up unique heat signatures, launch plumes, and the distinct speeds that set missiles apart from regular aircraft. While traditional radar is limited by the curve of the Earth, satellites enjoy 360-degree coverage, ensuring that no launch can escape detection. The main objective is to identify missiles soon after they launch, especially during the short but critical boost phase the moments when a missile's engines carry it into space and it is at its most vulnerable. Once a launch is detected, the Golden Dome's integrated artificial intelligence goes to work. It instantly analyzes streams of data gathered from multiple sensors, calculating the missile's speed, trajectory, and likely target. In the process, the system is smart enough to distinguish between real threats, ballistic, hypersonic, and cruise missiles, and false alarms like space launches or satellites. This ability to continuously track threats from space provides an almost immediate real-time picture, which is crucial when every second matters for decision-makers. One of the most groundbreaking features of the Golden Dome is its plan to position interceptor weapons in space, just above the atmosphere. These interceptors aren't tied to the ground. Instead, they are already in orbit, strategically stationed, and ready to move quickly into position. Their closeness to possible missile flight paths means they can react nearly instantaneously, giving defenders a real chance to intercept missiles during those early, most vulnerable moments after launch. The Envision arsenal includes powerful lasers as well as kinetic interceptor missiles that physically collide with their targets. By targeting hostile missiles at this earliest phase, the system dramatically boosts the odds of a successful interception, potentially stopping threats before they can unleash decoys or multiple warheads. Let's take a look into more detail how these kinetic interception works. As you can see, there are 100s of these interceptor satellites that will be equipped with missiles at lower Earth orbit, reducing the launch time and interception. The system would deploy interceptor missiles from both space-based platforms, such as satellites in low Earth orbit, and enhanced ground-based missile defense sites. These interceptor missiles use kinetic kill vehicles that maneuver to collide at extremely high velocities with incoming threats like ballistic or hypersonic missiles. The collision's kinetic energy destroys the target with and without explosives. Here comes the laser attack from outer space. Golden Dome also proposes the use of directed energy weapons such as lasers mounted on satellites. This is how it might work. The satellite aims a high-energy laser beam directly at the missile's booster section. This laser beam carries enormous concentrated energy, often from a directed energy weapon system designed for space. The energy from the laser heats the missile's surface, often targeting the missile's engines or fuel tanks. 
This intense heating can disable or destroy the missile by causing structural damage, igniting fuel, or interfering with the missile's flight control systems. Because lasers travel at the speed of light, the engagement is near instantaneous compared to kinetic interceptors. This allows for rapid targeting and multiple shots with no need for physical ammunition or reloads in space. However, there are practical challenges related to energy supply limitations on the satellite and precision aiming at long distances. But you cannot ignore the advantage of satellite-based laser interceptors. If successful at their ability to engage missiles very early in flight during the boost phase before the missile can deploy countermeasures like decoys or multiple warheads, greatly increasing the chance of successful interception. But there is this one crazy idea named Rods from God from Jerry Pornell, a Boeing engineer. He imagined dropping huge metal rods, usually made of tungsten, from space to hit targets on Earth, just like a giant meteor crashing down. He used his knowledge of math, physics, and technology to design this concept, hoping for a powerful space weapon that didn't need explosives. Speaking of engineers, Brilliant makes it easy to become one and learn every day with interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Instead of just passively watching videos, he'll actually learn by doing, solving problems, and practicing concepts hands-on. This is up to six times more effective than passive learning. Take, for example, their programming courses of problem-solving skills to thrive in the evolving world of learning Python to developing a hands-on experience with real programs and learn to think like a programmer. And if you're curious about artificial intelligence, there's a unit course dedicated to understanding how artificial intelligence really works. Step-by-step, step, Brilliant helps you sharpen your thinking and become a better problem solver. You can start learning for free at brilliant.org slash AITelly by scanning the QR code on screen or by clicking the link in the description. Brilliant has also given our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which provides unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. But how do these rods from God play into the Golden Dome theory? This is one particularly futuristic aspect of the Golden Dome involves the potential use of satellites to drop metal rods as kinetic weapons, sometimes called rods from God. These non-explosive tungsten rods dropped from orbit would accelerate to extraordinary speeds as they fall, striking with devastating kinetic force. Shaped to minimize air resistance and capable of surviving the intense heat of atmospheric re-entry, a single rod could hit with the impact of many tons of TNT, easily breaching even reinforced underground bunkers. Despite the appeal of such weapons, financial and technical challenges are significant. Imagine a tungsten rod the size of a telephone pole 20 feet long and a foot in diameter, striking a hardened bunker at 10 times the speed of sound. The destructive potential is enormous, but so is the cost. Each rod would weigh over 10,000 kilograms and could cost upwards of $300 million to deploy, making it far more expensive than traditional bunker-busting bombs or even nuclear alternatives. The deployment of such weapons could also spark an arms race in space as rival nations might be tempted to respond with similar capabilities. While the psychological impact of such unstoppable space-based weapons could in itself be a powerful deterrent, their actual destructive power falls short of even the smallest tactical nuclear bombs. For example, a 20-foot tungsten rod traveling at hypersonic velocity would strike with the force of about 11.5 tons of TNT, enough to burrow deep into a bunker, but nowhere near the scale of devastation caused by nuclear warheads. The rods excel at targeting deeply buried, hardened military sites, but would not inflict broad surface damage on nearby infrastructure and importantly, they would not create the radioactive fallout associated with nuclear strikes. This lack of lingering radiation is one of the main motivations behind their conceptual development. Yet, as impressive as these rods might be, they are unlikely to replace nuclear weapons. Achieving damage on the scale of a nuclear blast would require deploying thousands of rods, which is simply not practical with today's technology and launch costs. Instead, these projectiles are best viewed as specialized bunker-busting tools or precision weapons against strategic high-value targets. In contrast, nuclear bombs are weapons of mass destruction meant to devastate entire cities or regions. When comparing the two, the major advantage of Thor rods lies in their pinpoint accuracy, lack of fallout, and psychological impact while nuclear bombs remain unparalleled in terms of sheer destructive capability and indiscriminate devastation. In essence, Thor rods deliver powerful, targeted kinetic strikes without the consequences of radioactive fallout, but they cannot compare to the sweeping destruction of nuclear weapons. 
The Golden Dome, by combining these evolving technologies, aims to secure America's future under a truly next-generation shield. But what about the other superpowers? China and Russia are both active participants in the space race, developing advanced technologies such as the Fractional Orbital Bombardment System. This sophisticated missile delivery system developed by China enables a nuclear weapon or other warheads to be placed into a partial orbit around the Earth and then deorbited to strike targets from unexpected directions. The process begins with the launch where FOBS is propelled by a rocket similar to an intercontinental ballistic missile ICBM. Unlike traditional missiles that follow a direct ballistic trajectory toward a target, FOBS places its payload into low Earth orbit. Once in orbit, the payload, often a nuclear warhead, travels along a partial orbital path covering only a fraction of a full circle around the Earth. This partial orbit is the origin of its name, the Fractional Orbital Bombardment System. After reaching this orbit, the warhead has the ability to maneuver in space, adjusting its trajectory. This maneuverability allows it to approach its target from virtually any direction, including unexpected vectors such as over the South Pole areas less protected by traditional missile defenses. When the warhead arrives at the designated point in its orbit, it deorbits and re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. At this stage, the warhead separates from any accompanying delivery vehicle and begins its final descent toward the target. In the terminal phase, the final moments before impact, the warhead moves at extremely high speeds, making it significantly more difficult for missile defense systems to intercept. Because the re-entry point is unpredictable and the velocity is so high, existing missile defense systems, which are designed for predictable ballistic trajectories, face a major challenge in countering this threat. We also make original engineering content, so please subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos.